Hello and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Tenyo La Shobo Ali. The ruling Botswana Democratic Party has won the general election after securing 29 National Assembly seats, representing 51% of the vote. Botswana voted on Wednesday to elect 57 National Assembly and 490 local government representatives, with the candidate of the winning party set to become president. Chief Justice Teran Ranawane announced that the number of parliament seats attained so far by the BDP, with the vote counting still ongoing, obliged him to say Mogwetsi Masisi has been elected as president. The main opposition, the Umbrella for Democratic Change, UDC, secured 13 seats while the Botswana Patriotic Front won three and the Alliance for Progressive only won, with 73% of the voting districts counted so far. Thousands of people in Guinea are protesting a suspected effort by President Alpha Conde to seek a third term. In the largest of a series of protests, many march against the president's possible third term that have led to the jailing of dozens of opposition campaigners and politicians. Thousands of people chanting, Amulanfe and free the prisoners brought the Guinean capital Conakry to a standstill. Amulanfe means it will not pass in the local Susu language, referring to the president's attempts to change the constitution. The march was organized by the National Front for the Defense of the Constitution, FNDC, a coalition of politicians and activists. Our first aim is to demand that Alpha Conde renounce his plan for a third mandate. The second is to demand the release of our comrades and colleagues, as well as all those who were arrested and sentenced during the protests. More than 10 of them were sentenced to prison terms varying between six months and a year on Tuesday for inciting violence. The peaceful protests were held in a number of cities across the West African country. I have never seen such a full and consensual demonstration since I have been in politics except when we were fighting against the military. President Alpha Conde is seeking a possible change in the constitution that will give him a third term in office. The 81-year-old, whose second and final five-year term expires next year, has refused to rule out running again. His opponents fear that could be used as a reset button on his presidency, allowing him to run again like other African leaders who have amended or changed constitutions in recent years to stay in power. Guinea might be new to protests in recent weeks, but Algeria isn't as hundreds of lawyers took to the streets of the capital calling for justice reforms and an end to arrests and trials without evidence. Lawyers carrying Algerian flags marched through the capital chanting justice was sold by traitors before gathering outside the city Mahmoud court. Last week, a court ordered the detention of a journalist and activist on charges of undermining the army, according to a committee that defends detainees. Algeria has seen weekly mass protests since February, leading to the toppling of veteran leader Abdulaziz Bouteflika and forcing the authorities to detain many senior officials on corruption charges. Moving down to southern Africa, thousands of people are marching across Zimbabwe in government-organized protests against U.S. and EU sanctions. The demonstrators say the sanctions have ruined the Zimbabwean economy, but the U.S. and EU argue they have been imposed on individuals and companies and have no impact on the economy. The government has made the day a public holiday, provided buses for marches, and President Emerson Manangagwa is expected to give an address at the National Sports Stadium. Let's get more on this story from Zimbabwean journalist Nigel Yamachumbu. And Nigel, thanks for joining us. Today is an unusual public holiday in the country. I imagine this has garnered various reactions. Indeed, there has been widespread uh, condemnation and 
criticisms around the move by the Zimbabwean government to declare uh, the 25th of October a national public holiday. Um, Precisely because while it's there is that acknowledgement that uh, SADC set aside the day to be a day in which uh, the, through the members within the Southern African community and indeed the African Union that uh, they add to their voice uh, um, advocating uh, the United States of America and uh, generally its allies in the West to uh, remove the sanctions on Zimbabwe. Uh, the move to then declare that a national holiday um, is for you know has been viewed as un- unnecessary and uh, bizarre to say the least. Um, but suffice to say, well, uh, there are some that feel this is a, a, a real national issue, uh, a significant issue that would warrant everyone to uh, stop business and stop whatever it is they're doing to add their voice for this national cause. Uh, but uh, whether that direct move will have any impact or any effect uh, to the sanctions being uh, removed is, is something that critics are pointing to, uh, saying that uh, it's therefore not necessary. You know, uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa is also expected to give an address. Has this happened, Nigel? And what exactly did the president have to say? Yes, President Mnangagwa led the um, uh, march against sanctions, the uh, uh, event that uh, marked the, the national event in the capital, Harare, uh, where he addressed the multitudes of uh, predominantly ruling parties and OPF supporters that turned up and uh, um, a few other uh, diplomats, particularly from within the uh, African uh, community, um, as well as uh, other uh, uh, sympathizers to this uh, particular cause. In his address, President Munangagwa uh, um, you know, re- reiterated the country's position that these sanctions are not targeted and are not just restrictive measures on individuals uh, and, and and a few companies as is paroted or is, is argued by the West, but uh, are in actual fact uh, real and uh, do affect the ordinary Zimbabwean and do affect um, the livelihoods of people. That was the crux uh, of his uh, message. And in his message, uh, he was rallying uh, Zimbabwe and Africa uh, at large to maintain the momentum uh, in uh, advocating and calling for the sanctions uh, to be removed. Uh, we are yet to get any real uh, reactions to this addressed from any of the players, uh, political players in the country. Um, but uh, it, it's uh, really uh, uh, nothing out of the, 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 the obvious. Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, they will naturally get the obvious reactions uh, from, from these various sects. All right, Nigel Yamatrimbu, Zimbabwean journalist, speaking to us there from Harare. Moving on in South Africa, calm seems to be holding, and Nigerians affected in last Tuesday's attacks in Whitbank are counting their losses and trying to move on. Three businesses were attacked and four people were injured, the last of whom has been discharged from hospital. The attacks followed a claim by a lady that a Nigerian allegedly held her captive for sexual exploitation in a brothel. According to the police, local citizens led by the Taxi Association in their fight against crime in the community took the laws into their own hands and attacked some Nigerians in that area. The calm after Tuesday's attacks in Whitbank and Bumalanga province seems to be holding and those affected have been counting their losses. Ms. Obi Nawanachi, a motor spare parts dealer, is one of the victims of the attacks. I saw a lot of people uh, coming to attack from there. They start hitting me I, and they wanted to burn me inside my shop. Uh, if I wasn't having a firearm to, to scare them and run outside, I should, have been, I should have been burned inside the shop. That was how I came out and, and escaped. 
What happened, I don't know. Here around my shop, I'm the only in Nigeria, there is no drug selling in this, in this area or in my shop or, any, or anywhere here. Nigeria's Consul General in South Africa, Mr. Godwin Adama, accompanied by leaders of the Nigerian Citizens Association South Africa, was on the scene hours after the attack, where he met the local police commander, General Kikana, as well as the Nigerian community. We asked him the situation three days after. Everything was okay by the time we left there. Yesterday, I called again. Everything was okay. In fact, the police uh, uh, people there told me that the town is as if nothing has ever happened. And it is still the same today. Uh, of course, this is a test for the early warning system that both governments have talked about. Uh, do you think, I know damage was already done by the time uh, things, before things calmed down. What assurances have you been given by the police in terms of arresting people? He assured me that the, uh, the in, uh, crime investigation team are still out and that they are going to arrest. The only thing he appealed to me is that let the Nigerians be willing to come and give evidence when they are called upon. And I told Nigerians, irrespective of whatever, they should be able to give evidence when the arrests are made. He promised to make arrest. I understand... Um this lady who claimed she was kept for sexual exploitation uh, uh, claimed that a Nigerian was responsible for that. Did we establish whether it was indeed a Nigerian? Well, that we were unable to fully establish. What we are told there is that that restaurant is located in an area where there is one of the biggest brothers in that town. I went there, I think it's, going, it's carrying over... Is, is holding over 50 to 60 guests. So I asked... Owned by Nigeria? No, I asked, who owns this brother? Eventually I was told it's not a Nigerian. We all agree that it's not a Nigerian. But what is there is that Nigerians hold around the area. They have that restaurant there. They have another game uh, uh, shop around there. And because they are always holding in the area, it will be taken that they are the one running the brothers. And because of that, when this thing happened, that was one of the first areas that they went to attack. But one fact which is there, which of course on our own part, we must be able to tackle, and that is why we work with the police to tackle, is that it's a small town. There's a sizable population of Nigerians there who are doing nothing. An expanded stakeholders meeting comprising the police, the local taxi association, the Nigerian community in South Africa, as well as the Nigerian mission officials, is expected soon. Hopefully, dialogue will bring calm before attacks bring hurt and more destruction. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television.